Hi, it's Paul Hill from ITFlee.com, and in this lesson, you're going to learn about Active Directory users and computers. Active Directory users and computers, also known as Active Directory or just AD for short, is a tool that is installed when a server has the Active Directory domain services role installed. It can also be on the server if there's other roles installed, but primarily if you see the Active Directory domain services role installed, you know that Active Directory will also be on the server. Now, just as the name implies, Active Directory is a live directory or database that stores user accounts and their passwords, computers, printers, file shares, security groups, and their respective permissions. Now, each of these are considered their own objects, but one thing about groups is that that contains nothing but other objects. So a group could be made up of other Active Directory users or computers, printers, or file shares. Now, the reason for using groups within Active Directory is frequently for security purposes. You can use AD and group policy together to assign specific permissions for objects within Active Directory. And you can do this for groups or just particular computers or particular users. Now, the purpose of Active Directory is to handle security authentication across the domain. One of the ways AD does this is by only allowing authorized users to log on to the network. Active Directory also provides centralized security management of your network resources by storing things like usernames, passwords in one location instead of the administrator needing to store this information on each individual computer. The most common task you'll be asked to do in Active Directory is reset user passwords and create or delete user accounts. For example, every time a new employee is hired at your company, they will need login credentials. You will need to create their user account and help them log in for the first time. Now, often people will forget their passwords and you'll be asked to reset it for them and you'll use Active Directory to do this. If you not have Active Directory, you would need to create a local account on each computer that the new employee would need to access. So if you have five computers and the employee needs to access all five, you need to create five user accounts. Also, every time you had to reset a password for that user, you would need to do it on each computer they had accounts on. It's not a big deal if you only have a handful of computers, but what happens when you have 200 computers on the network or 1,000 or 100,000? You obviously can't go and reset the password on each computer for each user account because you're gonna get multiple password reset requests a day. So you might have 10 or 15 people every day that forget their password and need you to reset it for them. And if you're doing that for 10 or 15 people a day times you know 1,000 computers, that's way too much time. So Active Directory solves this problem by having all the accounts stored in one place. When a user tries to log into a domain joined workstation, the computer reaches out to the domain controller and checks the entered credentials against the credentials that are stored in Active Directory. This means that when a user changes his password in Active Directory, the change will be effective for all domain computers on the network. So if you have a thousand computers, they change it in one spot on the domain controller, and that is effective for all the computers or whatever number of computers that they need to access. Now, this example not only applies to user accounts, but the other objects that can be stored in Active Directory, like computers, printers, file shares, and groups. Now that you understand what Active Directory is, let's learn about the interface. Now to start Active Directory, you need to open Server Manager, and it's important to tell you that I'm already logged into my ITF domain controller. So I have Server Manager open, and I'm just gonna click on Tools, and then we're gonna select Active Directory Users and Computers. Now we can see the console has appeared. I'm gonna go ahead and maximize this console and I'm gonna drag out this little sidebar here. Now this window looks like those consoles you've seen before like D the DNS manager or DHCP. On the left we have our navigation pane and on the right we have the contents of the current location. On the menu we have the file, we have action, view, and help. Within the file menu you can either exit Active Directory or select options. Within options, you can delete any changes you've made to the view of Active Directory users and computers. That is the console. So I haven't made any changes, so I don't have any files to delete, so let's click cancel. The action menu is the same exact action menu you would get if you right click on an object. So if I select itflea.com and I click action, we'll notice that these options are the same exact set of options I'll get if I simply right click on itflea.com. The view menu allows you to add or remove columns as necessary to show or hide information and it can be make things a lot quicker if you're trying to find a certain field and you're looking through a bunch of objects inside of Active Directory. Now most importantly inside of this view is the advanced features. Now this viewing mode shows a lot of hidden and useful information that you would otherwise not be able to find. The filter option allows you to show or hide certain types of object types within the contents pane. 
Now, this could be useful if you only want to find users or if you only want to see groups and you have a bunch of different object types stored within the same organizational unit. So uh, I'm just going to click cancel here. The customize option allows you to further customize your view within the Active Directory users and computers console by showing or hiding different components. We could hide, show the description bar, uh, turn off the console tree, standard menus, uh, standard toolbar, etc. I'm just going to click OK. For most administrators, the default options work just fine. The help menu allows you to quickly access help topics and the Tech Center website. You can also view the version of the Microsoft Management Console or MMC and Active Directory users and computers by clicking the about for each respective item. So if we click on Active Directory, we can see we have version 10 here, we just click OK. And you can do the same for the Management Console. OK, so click OK. Below the menus, you're going to see several action buttons. First, you have your navigational buttons like going forwards or backwards. So if I click inside of here, I can click the back arrow and navigate back and forth. This is just like when you're using Windows Explorer and you want to navigate forwards or backwards. Next, you have several buttons that will change depending on what type of object you selected. You can hover over each of the buttons and learn what they do by simply reading the tooltip that will automatically appear. So now this menu will change depending on if I have a domain controller selected, an OU, and sometimes it'll change for the particular objects you have selected inside of an OU or container. Next, you have what's called the toolbars, and that's this section right here. Now, first here, we can create a new user, we can create a new group, or we could create a new organizational unit in the current container. Now, we can also set filtering options. That's the same as going up here, hitting view, and setting filter options. So, uh, a little bit of redundancy here. And next, we have the find objects in Active Directory. Now, this is pretty important. So if we click this little button right here, we can search for different objects like users, contacts, groups, computers, printers, file shares, etc. So if you need to find something in Active Directory and you're not sure where it is, this is the best way to do it. The most important thing you need to remember is that this N option here is by default whatever OU you're residing in. So if you want to search the entire domain, you can select itflea.com. Or if you have multiple domains, you can click entire directory. Entire directory will always cover the most area as possible. So if you want to just do the broadest search you can, you want to select entire directory and then type in your search and just click find now. You can also just click find now and it'll discover every object that is in your domain or in uh, trusted domains. So we'll close out of this find users here. Now we can select a particular user here and we can click this add user to a selected group. It adds a selected object to a group you specify. So by clicking on that user and clicking this button, we can type in a group like domain admins or anything we'd like and just click OK and we can quickly add them to that group. Now on the left side of the console, we have our navigation pane. At the top, you'll see saved queries. And at the top, you'll see saved queries and the name of your domain, itflea.com in my case. Now, saved queries is commonly ignored by many administrators. It allows you to quickly locate things like expired or locked out user accounts, user accounts who have not logged in with the last 30 days, and more. As the name implies, you can quickly create these searches and save them for later use. This can make redundant tasks much easier. Like a lot of times you'll have, you know, a hiring manager or someone who's trying to secure the domain will say, hey, I want to know who hasn't logged in in the last 30 days, and I want you to disable or delete their accounts. And you can do that with saved queries. ITflea.com refers to the domain that Active Directory is servicing. You may right click on the domain and complete several actions. First, we can delegate the control of the domain, and this will allow you to choose additional users who may manage the domain. The Find button allows you to locate objects stored within this domain. It's the same as clicking this little uh, search button up here. You may change domains by selecting the Change Domain option. You would use this option if you had a subdomain or another trusted domain on your network. You can also change to another domain controller by using the change domain controller button. Since we only have one domain controller in our network, we're not going to be able to do this. So let's click cancel. Now the raise domain functional level button. Let's talk about this. This option is used to enable active directory features when you have multiple domain controllers on a network that are not the same version. Some features are only available when all your servers are updated to the latest version available. For example, if I had a Windows Server 2012 domain controller and a Windows Server 2016 domain controller both servicing the same network, your domain's functional level would be that of the 2012 domain controller. 
meaning that the service could not use some of the features, some of the new features from Windows Server 2016, but they could only use the features included with 2012. Now, if we're to upgrade that 2012 server to 2016, we could then come back to this screen and raise the domain functional level to that of 2016 to enable the new features. Now we can see that my domain functional level is Windows Server 2016 because we only have one server on the network and it's a Windows Server 2016 server. So we'll click close here and now we can right click again and we have the operations masters option. So we click on this. Now this allows you to choose which servers operate master roles like the schema master, domain name naming master, relative identified master, primary domain controller emulator, and the infrastructure master. Now let me explain what these are and why they're important. If you have multiple domain controllers on your network, you can change which servers have what roles. Now this is something you would need to do when you remove a domain controller from the network. If you had a domain controller on the network that had the primary domain controller emulator or PDC emulator, and you wanted to remove that domain controller from the network, you'd first want to remove the role from that domain controller and transfer it to another server. So we would click over here and we would click change. And we can see that there's only one server uh, available, so I can't click that change button, it's not gonna work. If ITFDC02 was holding the PDC server role and I wanted to remove it off the domain, I could do that right here by clicking the change button and switching it over to ITFDC01, and then I would be free and clear to remove that server from the network. Active Directory Domain Services is a multi-master enabled database, which means that several domain controllers can make changes to this database. Allowing multiple DCs to write changes to the database can sometimes cause conflicting updates to occur. Now this is where Operation Master steps in to resolve the issue by only allowing certain DCs to make changes to certain parts of Active Directory domain services. So that is why you don't want to have several domain controllers trying to act as the RID or relative identified master because it's better just to have one domain controller who's responsible for that and that way you don't have conflicting updates happening from two different servers. Now since we do not have any additional domain controllers on the network, we cannot change any of the Operation Master settings. So if we click change, we're just gonna get an error saying the domain controller is the operations master. To transfer the operations master to another computer, you must first connect to it. Okay, so we're the only one connected to the network, so obviously we can't do that. So we'll click close. All right, so if we right click back on the domain controller, the new option allows us to create new objects within Active Directory, like user accounts, computer accounts, and more. And we have all tasks, which is basically the same options that we have up here. Uh, we can change, make changes with the view, which we've already covered all of this. Also, it's the same as this little view option here. And we have export list, which allows us to export a list of the contents of this domain to a text file. Can be useful uh, if you need that. Uh, we can do, we can refresh it or we can go to properties and we can uh, find out information about the name, the description, and who manages the domain. Now you can do the same for right clicking on any objects within here. So. So like for this organizational unit, we can export a list, we can view properties, we can uh, filter options, create a new organizational unit, computer, contact, whatever we would like to do. Uh, we can also right click and choose help. Uh, most of the time these help documents are somewhat helpful, but they most nine times out of 10, when you wanna try and do something, you don't know how to do it, a quick search on Google will pull up whatever you need and you'll be good to go. So that's all we're gonna cover for this lecture. I hope you learned something from it. I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.